Hey, today I thought I'd do another integral from MIT integration B2023. This was actually from the quarterfinal, problem 2-1. Okay, so let's take a look at it. So we have the integral from square root of e to infinity of x to the minus ln x dx. Okay, so a really standard thing that we'll do when we have x in the base, and in a case where we obviously can't use the power rule here, we can just rewrite this x. We can write x as e to the ln x. And then from here, I'm just gonna plug this back in. So rewriting this thing. So we'll write in here our e to the ln x, but then notice we're raising it essentially to this minus ln x. So if I just by exponent rules, multiply the exponents, we can write this as minus ln x squared. Okay, and that looks pretty good because we like e as the base, but then this exponent's still kind of scary. So what I'm gonna do is let's just do a u substitution and try to clean this up. So I'm gonna make ln x my u. And then solving for x, we can write x as e to the u, just by the properties of the logarithm. Then let's take our derivative here. So for dx, we're just gonna have derivative of e to the u is e to the u du. Then I'm gonna make my substitution over here. Now I'm gonna plug in, let's plug in infinity here. Natural log of infinity is still infinity. Natural log to the square root of e. Now we can write our e as e to the 1 half so that then when we plug this in here, we're gonna have ln e to the one half, but taking the one half in front, this is just one. So we end up with just one half here. Then we'll substitute here. So we're gonna have e to the minus u squared. Then for dx, it's just gonna be eu du. But then by exponent properties here, I can add the exponents because we have the same base. So I'm just gonna rewrite this as e minus u squared plus u. At this point, you may see where I'm going with it, but what I want to do is, I'm still not comfortable with this exponent. I want, if we're gonna have a squared term, I want just one thing squared. So let's just work on the algebra. So let's just focus on this exponent and see if we can get this into a little nicer form. First, what I'm gonna do is just take a minus sign out of it. So I'm gonna write it as u squared minus u. And then take, well, with this thing I'm gonna do is we're just gonna complete the square. So we'll keep our minus sign there. I'll write this as u minus one half. Just noticing like if there's a one there, taking the half of that, taking divided by two, we get our minus one half. Now when we square this out, we get u squared minus u plus a fourth. We don't wanna change it, so I'm just gonna subtract one fourth here. Then I'm gonna just distribute our minus sign back in to clean it up, so we're gonna have minus u minus one half squared, and then this is gonna become a plus one fourth. So now we're gonna just take that and put it back into our integral and see what we have. So we're gonna have this piece here, minus u minus one half squared. Then we're gonna have a plus one fourth. But what I wanna do is, just notice this is the same as multiplying by e to the one fourth. So what I can do is take e to the one fourth and bring it up front and just remove this piece right here. Then one last move to clean up this exponent. I still don't quite like it. What we can do though is we'll just make a t substitution. I'm gonna call my t equal to this whole thing, u minus one half. Then taking our derivative, dt is gonna be equal to du. So we'll make this substitution real quick. Now plugging infinity in here for u, infinity minus a half is still infinity. Plugging a half in, half minus half, now our bounds are zero. Then again, this piece is just gonna be t, and we're gonna have e minus t squared dt. And that's very nice. You may recognize this piece. This is actually the Gaussian integral. So this value, actually, this unknown value, we're just gonna plug that in. We know the value for this is square root of pi over two. And so now just combining it with what we have in front here, we're gonna have e to the one fourth times square root of pi over two. In the answer key, they wrote this a little differently. I don't know, I kind of like it this way, but the way they do it is they write this as a fourth root e pi squared all over two. Anyway, that was a great problem day, so we'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.